Hey everyone, welcome to SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. For the realistic SLP. Welcome. Yay! It's this is Friday. episode nine. Is it? We've lost track. Yeah, episode nine, and we're going to talk about theory of mind. Whoa. I decided rhyming. I want to say that, oh yeah, look at us. I wanted to say that up top because um, a lot of our episode intros are all the same. So I oh. Wanted- so if I go back and listen, I want to know right away which one it is. I was also thinking that this is the only time we're going to actually say episode nine, theory of mind. Mm-hmm. So why not take advantage of right. it? Right, yeah. We should not just let that only be written. We should get the chance to rhyme. Episode nine, theory of <laughs> wait, no, <laughs> theory of mind. Well, or wrap it a so little bit. So that's like a slant rhyme, actually, which a I feel like I'm always trying to teach my students to use a little bit more of. Yeah, because it's, it's like um, a new version of MIT. Like, hey, yeah, we're getting cool. Exactly. We're funky. MIT is melodic intonation therapy. Um, yeah, and I like to, I love using melodic intonation in all of therapy. Because it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maria it's, is already drunk. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, no I, I was like, no. we better, it's one minute and 27 seconds into the podcast. Maria cannot construct a sentence. I, I was like, Maria, if you don't shut up, we're never going to start. <laughs> I'm just, no, I don't want to say that. I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you want to say what you can't speak why <laughs> that's a lot of questioning <laughs> right now all right now let's no i've had a long day yes i was tired when i came here and i had a little bit of the wine that we're drinking which i would journeyed. love to, i did i had a, just a very overwhelming day but in a way a good day yeah. so i'm not i'm not intoxicated don't no. say that no no it's just no. that she has um used all her energy um while drinking all the wine no no. right yeah i like that better actually she just has probably used all of her energy from traveling public transportation yes from staten island to manhattan and then to brooklyn yes so like she seriously she just did the oregon trail of new york city i did and don't forget i got my hair colored Yes. I was so in the hair salon. Still for that long. After, but I liked it. Yeah. I needed it. I got my hair done and then I went shopping, which is like all different emotions come along with mm-hmm. when you're shopping. And I did bathing suit shopping, which oh. is oh, stressful. So I'm happy with you what I got. Jump off the bridge or you want to no, stay on? No, no. Of course. Of course. <laughs> stay on. Always. Always stay on. Always stay on the bridge. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, no. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I understand. Sometimes it's just like the most frustrating. It's very frustrating to me to find any bathing suit that fits i know and now it's like all right the trend is i'm not going to talk about this too much but the Mm -hmm. trend is now one pieces right yeah my body just doesn't look good in one pieces i've tried them on they're Mm -hmm. frustrating and then i'm like i don't want ugly tan lines so i'm just gonna stick with what looks good to my body that's exactly just stick what stick with what works for you Mm -hmm. but also try to veer away so i got some um i got like a silver bikini and a gold one i was like oh gold bikini that's what i'm saying my favorite bikini was a gold bikini that's and then my sister lost one of the pieces of it i'm like oh it's so sad because we all like shared this gold oh wow because it was like the best bathing suit wow but she moved and i think she just like you know everything gets disorganized um but yeah, so I have a hard time finding bathing suits. I think that they would look good in a one piece, but they don't fit me. None of them fit me because if you have like a large chest, they don't give you enough surface area to pull it all the way over, right. over your shoulders. <laughs> And so I, it's like hanging down. I have good tips, though. I have learned. Uh-huh. <laughs> should my tip and trick be about yeah, bathing suits? Well, there are no Because I feel like after today, this was a good tip. and tr- I'll, I'll save it. Okay, fine. But, save um, it. All right, so let's talk about the wine okay. that I'm drinking. That I really like this wine, if yes. you can't tell. <laughs> uh, Maria is drinking it, not sink. Well, she is both drinking and sinking it. <laughs> drinking it and sinking No, you flip. All right, so it's a Canteen Colosi mm-hmm. uh, wine, Nero Davola, a 2016. And it's from Sicily. It's very mm-hmm. fancy. It's a uh, super... Nope, it's a bold, sorry, bold, because Deborah texted me the information, and I'm more of like a visual, like, writer, so anyway, 
It's a, f- <laughs> there's a typo in this text. Fruit driven flavors that range from black just, cherry uh, to prune. I copied and pasted that. So I know, but I guess that, artic- that article had a spelling error or you did. Doesn't but that make you lose faith in it? No, I only copied ye- and pasted it. But oh, yeah. but we like this mm-hmm. uh, website because it gave us a very nice yes. explanation of this wine. It sure did. What is the name of this website? This is oh. uh, winetasteathome.com. <laughs> They, I guess they I made the website at home, wait, too. Wait, maybe that's the second one I looked at. That's not even the I one I think that, it's Wine Folly. No, yeah, this is Wine Folly. Okay, just Wine Just kidding. Folly. The other one I looked at, too. I just want to throw it out there. We both had long days today, long yes. days today too, right? You went to yes. the, in the hair salon. and Yeah, so checking in. So um, I went to go get my hair done, but then I didn't end up getting my hair done and oh. actually my boyfriend and I started looking at engagement. Rings. I know. She's texting me at the and hair salon and I'm like, my hair's in foils and I'm like, ah! I know. It's so exciting. I'm so excited for you. It's so funny and like so it was fun and I liked looking at the ring and I want it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe I'll look back on this episode and, and I'll be at the point in my life where I'm like, oh, when she thought it was a good idea and I'm like, the love is gone. Oh, like, why are you being negative? Negative. No, I don't think so. But it's funny if like I'm talking about this now and then in the future, I'm like, oh, no. That's but no. so funny you mentioned that because I'm thinking of the same thing. Not as mm-hmm. intense as your situation, but right. I'm blonde now. Right. And I'm like, do blondes have more fun? I don't know. Right. Let's, you're like, let's find out. I'll and find like, out. I'm like, buy me a ring. Buy, <laughs> buy me a ring. <laughs> he will. He will. All right. Let's get into the why. <laughs> I'm like, don't, Deborah, don't be that girl. <laughs> Just live in the moment. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy. I'm enjoying the moment. Enjoy I not being engaged. I enjoyed, yeah, I mean, but I already been not engaged. I'm but ready for something new. Enjoy the anticipa- anticipa- anticipation, anticipation of being of being. A- of yeah. being engaged so just okay so here's day just one enjoy- i'm enjoying <laughs> okay it. get your nails done all the time oh so i'm ready yeah i guess so like you're... every picture i sent i had these hideous hands i'm like i need some lotion right <laughs> there you go buy some new lotion oh, all I right just don't use it i like this lotion here we go lotion again so oh, yeah so, so the wine is great the wine is very good um I don't think it's that acidic. Um, and we paired it with Manchego cheese. Yeah, Manchego. Did I say that the so right way? The wine is from Sicily. Mm-hmm. And then it said that it paired best with aged cheese. But mm. the website was way more about meat than it was about cheese. Right. Everything was just like this kind of stew, this kind of thing. So then it said um, something like an acidic, spicy marinade. So like spicy tomato sauce and a shellfish or go something like a, a beef stew or oxtail stew. And so what? bring it out. So what Deborah did, yes. I'm so proud. I walk in and Deborah is... I'm cooking, man. Cooking. I was like, cooking. what? What? Yeah. This is I'm a like, Friday I night. Be a wife. Fr- oh, no. that's good. No. That's good. Is that what you were doing? Oh, no, he didn't even eat it. It wasn't for him. It was for me. It and was I for wanted- me too. I ate yeah. it. It was for us. It was for us. And I didn't want. Um, I didn't want to do it. I wanted him to do it. But I was like, I can do it. I see. So yeah. tell us about your cooking experience. Um. So I just, you know, I worked in restaurants for a long time, and I've seen fritz shrimp. Fra Diablo made about a bazillion times. So mm. that's just what I made. Mike makes uh, and sells tomato sauce. It's Racine Brothers sauce. It's so good. It's very good. It's uh, already spicy and it's vegetarian. But it's not that spicy. It's not that spicy. Because I don't have a high spice tolerance. Uh-huh. And his was like, oh, I wouldn't consider it spicy. You had a nice yeah. taste. Yeah, I like the spice. It's so funny. Like my grandmother just passed away this year. I'm but sorry. she had the tomato sauce and like one of her last words were like, I don't like his sauce. Oh wow. <laughs> but not last, like in the last year. It's just yeah. funny that it stands out to me that like before she died, Aww. she's like it's too spicy. See, she's with you everywhere you go. <laughs> That's how you gotta look at it. Yeah, he doesn't know that she says that though. Oh, you I could, don't think he'll listen. You could it's throw a- it out there one day. <laughs> It's just funny to me. Um, so we so, got fancy this episode, right? Yeah. We, we, made we had, food. you made food. I made food. I ate it. Good. That's yes. the protocol. That was great. Make it, we, eat it. Yeah. Don't get sick. I did. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Hopefully. No, we won't. We won't. We don't uh, know the future, though. It's it's Schrodinger's cat right now, or it's Schrodinger's um, shrimp fra diablo. 
Like, the cat is both dead or alive before you open the box. Yeah, We mo- are both sick and not sick before we get sick. Okay, so I think the average person, and myself included, does uh-huh. not know what that is. So I think, because you've Uh-oh. told me this before. I have. And it I was love this such example. excellent advice. So I think this is a great opportunity for you to mention this. Okay, and I'm not going to look it up or anything. So no. So, like, if I is... don't say the right thing, then just my version obviously is working. So just Correct. It. it is. It's a great. So it's like this theory that um, there's a guy and he puts a cat in a box and he closes the box and the box the cat is now in the box and they are wondering if the cat is dead or alive and in this period of unknowing the cat is both dead and it is both alive until you open the box. So like we are both sick and not sick until Mm -hmm. something changes or like the truth is revealed which does really bring us to our whole topic of theory of mind yeah and uh false truths and all of that actually well done good job (laughs) but yeah so So pretty much what you were telling me because i was expressing to deborah i was nervous about Mm -hmm. something and i just kind of like poured my heart out to her yeah and she gave me that example so how I interpreted it was, okay, so if I think positive and I act positive and I have these positive thoughts, then the positive outcome will come. And that's mm-hmm. everything I always believe in. But right. just hearing that example mm-hmm. was great. And I'm pretty sure that was in a movie. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, Disturbance or something. I will look that up. Well, while you're talking about but watching It's about something. metaphysics. Metaphysics oh, okay. is that approach. That There's an episode of... Um, Big Bang Theory, where they mm. talk about Schrodinger's cat, the whole thing. Oh. So if I didn't explain it well, you can watch that episode of, of uh, Big Bang, and they'll explain it better than me. So I suggested to Deborah that when I go to Greece, she should just, um, you know, have a little hiatus of the show, and she should just make a whole to-do list of other stuff oh. she could do. So you should I think it rewatch like, that does episode. Does Maria think I have lots to do? Though, this do you think room I'm behind? is a little cluttered. This room is a little cluttered. Can we talk about? Let's talk about the room, and then we really, yeah. really need so to get to theory of mind. So the room is mind. cluttered because um, my classroom had materials and my car had materials. It's overwhelming me. Oh well, you just need to settle down and stop focusing on the holistic perspective. Like, like, it will actually usually I'm like look at the whole thing. Look at what you're doing. I'm just <laughs> focus on this page. I'm actually using a crate full of therapy Toys. materials as a desk. So thank you. Wait, for that. you don't have ther- therapy materials in your house? No, I have a rule against that. Oh well, see, I don't have that rule. I have the rule that you know. I it's don't called know. don't bring your work home. Literally, don't. I like bring... to look at what I have, and I have ideas. I create things in this place. I do have things in my trunk, though, so I I'm had, a little my cheap. My trunk cheating. was so full. I, Mike took all of. The, he bought these totes, and he took everything out of my trunk, and then he put it in here. So now I have to go through it. So if you're in NYC and you are a speech grad student and you want to be my intern for a week, you can help me organize these materials. I love that idea. Right? And whatever you don't want, yeah, this, take it. There's definitely stuff in here you should throw out. Right. Like 100%. Yes, there is, for sure. Um, but then I did also have a garbage bag on hand when I was when Mike got to the bottom of the trunk, so I did already kind of, like, throw a lot out. What I, what I might have too much of is small toys, but then you can always find purposes oh, yeah. for those little toys. Oh, like of course. Like, the little people, the little animals. Oh, don't so, throw those out. No, I won't. But those are the only thing. Like, there's nothing. I keep, like, I have crayons, small toys, and prizes so they have to be organized so that they can be used you could also recycle some of this you could recycle used like broken crayons i have a crayon yeah. melter yeah you could I even bake that. them in the oven or stuff again add this to your to-do list of right. things to do when maria's away right okay i'll um i'll take that into consideration got You're a welcome. lot of things to do you do mm-hmm. but okay let's just get to the wine sink it or drink it drink it definitely drink, drink it, drink it. it. It's oh great. i need to drink it, I don't oh, and any. tell us about the wine. Oh, Deborah so brought the wine I, this time. Yeah, I I had this wine because it was my last session with uh, the, this family that I've been working with for three years who I have very much enjoyed working for. They found me privately because I worked at a summer camp and I had an intern. Nice. And then... I don't know what happened. I guess my intern was in class and the professor was like, do you guys know any therapists in Brooklyn? I have a family that's a friend of family. My 
like a friend of mine and they need a speech therapist so like that's wow. how the connection happened and um it, she's so I started just seeing the girl and their twins but then it just started to be like it was better for a group like it gave the mom a break yeah. but I was only focusing on one and it's not like anyone felt like they were being individualized nice I did like I could have like I did pay more attention to the one I was supposed to work with but yeah. then I saw how that did kind of like impact the one that I didn't really have to work with and like how that altered his behavior yeah so a sibling yeah, yeah. well they're twins right well even more yeah. I have a case I have a few cases of twins so yeah but I you know I only but work you with both. one yeah, yeah no yeah, I only work one. with one so yeah, I I've could had a see how that can influence one. you worked in their home this family at their home, but other ones yeah. with school. I have, I had a case too like that. Uh, yeah, so I had a case like that. And I would go to the home and the uh, sister would always try to come in and like the mom would be like, no, no, and kick right. her out. I'm like, no, bring her in. Yeah, like, let's do this just, together. Yeah. yeah. Because then you're wasting your time like fighting a force right. that, is, that is current and apparent. So it's like you're not even doing therapy in the environment that these skills would be utilized. That's such an excellent point. Because, like, point. the kid's going to be there. So make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shows, yeah. like, the parent, too, that, like, you know, it's not necessarily, like, oh, she's, you know, like, the other sibling is, like, you know, a bo bothersome. No, she's not. She has right. a lot of skills that. Do some dynamics shifting, too, if somebody feels like they're the troublemaker or something. Right. And remember how Mike Mike was talking about it on our last episode? Uh-huh. That, you What know, did he say? I mean, I have to listen to him all day, so it's not like I remember everything. He I, yeah, I that's, can't. that's, uh, ouch. No, yeah. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, I love him very much. Um, my sister's boyfriend just broke up with her, and he's a big oh, loser, God. so I'm so glad. Good. But, but yeah, Mike was saying how, like... Yeah. He didn't want to do anything wrong or then he kind of almost wanted to do things wrong for right. attention, you know. So he had like right. difference in like emotions, like a wave of emotions like right. from when he was younger to when he was older. Right. Like when he was younger, he um, didn't want his brother to feel different. So he would like do the behaviors like chewing on his shirt right. that his brother did so that his brother wasn't the only one he chewed on his shirt right even though he didn't have that sensory seeking behavior right but i think it did translate to as an adult like he like formed a habit wow for sure so he still bites on his shirt no he doesn't but i'm oh. sure he did like if you do something over and over again you're going to like form a habit right yeah that's all that's what a habit is operant conditioning right? yeah yeah so definitely he like took on some of those behaviors just so he wouldn't feel alone but mm -hmm. mike definitely like he likes to rub his fingers together oh right right he does that as an adult and he probably took that from because his brother does that with twist ties and pens Aww. but i think that's kind of cute yeah it's cute he just always um yeah like he he like feels for him a lot right he yeah. worries about him so yeah so yeah. sorry going back to the oh, siblings so the so. wine so why i have that so i've been working with these kids and we started off and sh and um the girl was like really she seemed regular and maybe it was like her semantics and syntax was all awkward because she was bilingual and she mm. was language delayed but it wasn't anything alarming i've never worked with this girl and thought like <gasps> But the mom was always so nervous, like, like she's she's not doing what everyone else in the school is doing, and mm -hmm. she's behind here, she's behind there. The teachers are saying she's not going to meet her speech therapy goals. Mm. I'm like, why did the speech therapist even say that to you? Like, under what circumstances did they say, like, it's unrealistic that your daughter is going to meet this goal by the end of the school year? And it was yeah. like, we'll identify 100 sight words. Whoa. Like, nothing crazy. What no, I meant that is that that's to me that sounds crazy, and I feel like based off our other episode where mm -hmm. we talked about smart goals very very briefly, but they have to be attainable. So if she's saying that she's not going to attain them, yeah. why did you even make them? Exactly. <laughs> so that was the first point. It's like they're supposed to be attainable. So if it's unreasonable, then how did it even come up in the first place? Second, I work with this kid, so I'm like she can do it. It's hard. Right. She gets nervous, uh. and she'll guess. But, like, with repeated practice, if that was my only goal that I was working on with her, then she definitely would get the 
sight words. But I was working mm. on other things too. And she did get them. Wow. She is so, like now we're well, it's there's been a three discrepancy years. there then. <laughs> but she eventually went for the whole neuropsych and mm-hmm. the mom's like, I just wanna know, I just wanna know. I'm like, Okay, whatever you want. I mean it's expensive and no matter what, she's the same kid and mm. I'm already telling you there's nothing wrong with her. She has attention issues. It's wow. hard for her to attend to something long enough for her to absorb it and then generalize that skill to another area. If you're not absorbing it, you're not going to get it. You're not right. going and yeah. then everything else builds on things so you fall behind. True. Because you're not attending. And she does that. She like it she struggles to look at what um she's doing, but mostly it's not because she's got so many other thoughts it's more about she's worried she's worried about not knowing mm-hmm. so she doesn't pay attention she's afraid so that maybe she's, it's like an anxiety it's thing. anxiety yeah. for sure it's crazy how yeah. anxiety is such a big factor right and so i feel like so many people have anxiety though yeah everyone has anxiety it's all i hear about these days you, i know do you me have anxiety too. I mean, a normal amount, I mean, I hate to use that N-word, the normal amount, Mm -hmm. but I hate to say that. Um, I think, yeah, it comes up for me, obviously, because I'm human, (laughs) you know, Uh, my body's going to release that cortisol, that stress hormone, Right. Um, but I work on, you know, other things, like I went for a run. Wait, that's not the stress hormone, is it? Cortisol is a stress hormone, I'm pretty sure. I think, well, norepinephrine is the... (laughs) Whoa, that's That's the neurotransmitter that causes anxiety. Cortisone, I think it is, it's, it's, uh... Cortisol. Cortisol, that's not a... I know that's the one that makes you overweight, but... I think it calms you down. It does? Like, serotonin... Steroid hormone. Which one is it? Steroids, yeah, because it reduces inflammation. Am I thinking of another word? Your, well, another norepinephrine one? is the one that causes anxiety. And then dopamine and serotonin mm, are... Yeah, the so happy ones. dopamine is just um, like a calming neurotransmitter. Uh-huh. And then serotonin is both calming and um, motivating. No, so dopamine's just happy, right? Right. So they're either excitatory or inhibitory. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say, but I don't know how to say it in the layman's terms. Right. So dopamine is um, excitatory, and serotonin is both. That's why it's my favorite neurotransmitter. Oh, okay. Because it's both, um, like, soothing and exciting. I think that's the cuddle hormone, right? No, that's oxy. No. Oh, my God. All right, too many hormones. All right. In a... In a in a nutshell, yes, of course, I feel some anxious sometimes. But uh-huh. like today, I went for a run, and I was like all like anxious about today and getting mm-hmm. my hair done, getting there on time, and sh- bathing suit shopping and recording tonight. So right. I was like, I need to meditate, and that helped. Yeah. So meditation is good. I yeah. Know. So you meditated today. That's good for you. I oh, I need to get into that. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna get a theory of mind. Let's talk Calm about down. theory of mind. I'm having anxiety. I know you're having about anxiety. The about, lack of theory of mind. Uh, well, this is all theory of mind. I'm relating to your feelings that are different than mine. I That's like the point. That. So so the thing is that so theory of mind is understanding why someone acts a certain way or predict how somebody will act in a scenario. Because right. you have to understand that people have thoughts and feelings that are diverging from yours. So what makes you feel worried doesn't make me feel worried. That's a good point. So, and I'm trying to help you with your worry. Like, you're so worried about the schedule, but like, no, this is our rule. We made this rule up. This is this isn't even real. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know? I know. Oh, you're right. So it's just like, whatever. But, I mean, right. it's a great example, though. It's showing that, like, like the more you understand yourself, the more you're able to understand other people. But if you only understand yourself, it's hard for you to understand other people. So it's hard to you for you to relate and communicate. Good point. So, and that's what autism is. So Right. I wanted to talk about theory of mind because it's the aspects of autism that I see the most in my setting. Even though people want to say I'm a glorified English teacher. Aw, now I feel bad. I but, didn't exactly say those words. Okay, I well, I, I don't mind. It doesn't, I don't oh. really have an ego. It's not my amigo, yeah. so. Right, I don't not. care. 
you know, what people think about you is none of your business is another quote that I love. So we should start integrating that into yeah that's into a, the, 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 the yeah the sessions the, the podcast so okay so um in theory of mind there's a way to determine um if somebody has issues in this area and it's a false truth test false truth test so it's like you reveal a scenario and then you reveal a change in that scenario and then you and you introduce a character who's unaware of that change and then you ask the listener to predict the outcome. Okay. Let's and let's I'm reenact. Going to break yeah, it let's out. let's break that so down. So I'm going for to our tell you a members. story. Okay. We have Charlie Brown and Ham. Okay. Or yeah, Charlie Brown and Ham. Okay. This is part and of the Charlie assessment. Charlie Brown too. has a cheese. Give him cheese. A cheese? Well, right I don't here. want to put the cheese on the table. He has got a quarter. We're going to give him a okay. quarter. He's going to have a quarter. Right. I'll take so, the cheese then. Yeah, you eat the cheese. Great. So Charlie Brown has a quarter, and Ham does not have a quarter. And, and when Charlie Brown is. wasn't looking, well, Charlie Brown put his quarter in this candle over here, and then he right. walked away. He walked away. Bye, Charlie Brown. Bye, Charlie. And then when Charlie was gone, Ham took the quarter out of Charlie's candle and put it in his own candle. And then he just stayed there. And then when Charlie came back, don't, okay, when Charlie came back, he is going to look for his, can, his quarter. So where will Charlie look for his quarter? So... Do you want me to answer, like, yeah. correctly or incorrectly? No, I want you to answer. I was talking to you while you are being a photographer. I know. I got it. <laughs> Charlie is going to look in the first can because when before he left, mm -hmm. it was put there. Right. So then he left. He doesn't know that it got moved to exactly. can number two. Yes. He doesn't. I know that, but Charlie Brown doesn't know that. Exactly. That's so, a hard skill. I'm sorry. That's hard. Yes, but if you are, are high functioning and you're able to read and write and communicate, then you're going to get under the rate. Like maybe people are unaware that you even have uh, autism or you're on the spectrum. Right. And this is something that's going to impact you while you are in the educational setting because it's going to impact your ability to comprehend stories right other people's and other characters other, motivations other exactly. characters um i'm gonna scroll through my instagram thoughts? for the video of me doing this test so you take it over tell okay. me about your or i have the video unless you're no there. i mean i can take it over okay go ahead so um theory of mind is something that you hear about it in grad school and you're like yes theory of mind and then you write the definition down right the ability to understand other person's point of view but when you get out there in the real world, what is that? What is right. theory of mind? And that's what I think the importance of this episode is, is mm -hmm. how we're assessing it. So you right. can give that little assessment. There. And we're going to give two examples. I'm going to post these when this comes out. But we're going to play this and put our microphones to it. And I'm sure we'll hear it. We because will? we okay. hear the alarm. So we'll hear this. We hear all the background noise. And we noise. hear all the, the helicopter that's behind us. Oh, uh, speaking of, and, and a horn. Go ahead. Yeah, so let's, we'll just uh, okay. play this one. Okay. Now, Sally has some candy, and she wants to keep the candy safe, so she puts it in her cup, and she covers it. And then she walks away. And then while she's gone, Andy went in the cup and took her candy and put it somewhere else. Now, Sally's coming back. Where is she going to look for the candy? I don't know, right here. Where? In the chair. On the chair. But ah. where will Sally look? Ah. Where does Sally think the candy is? In the cup. Yeah, Sally thinks the candy is in the cup. Why does Sally think the candy's in the cup? Um, because... Why does Sally think the candy's in the cup, even though it's on the chair? Sally, and this is Andy. So that's the video. So that's, he so he, that, he did good. No, right? he said the candy was, was, he said she'll look for the candy where it is. Right. Right. 
because it wasn't oh. until I did several repetitions yeah, yeah, did, and true. I used nonverbal skills to be like, your answer is incorrect. I'm like, no, that is where it is. But what's Sally going to think? Where does Sally think the candy is? Where did she leave it? So I have to mold that because if you see the video, which we don't have to, well, we can show you, but the kid just says it. Ah, timer. Mm -hmm. The kid just says it. Timer. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's put a cork in that one, and we'll go back, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, so halfway point. Mm -hmm. This means that hopefully you still like this episode and want to keep listening. And this Just means kidding. that Maria has anxiety about the <laughs> outcome of the episode. I do. It is Schrodinger's episode. It is either both great or awful. It's great. Obviously, it's <laughs> great. It's Friday night, and we're recording a podcast right. like Friday night. All right, so... Uh, at our halfway point, mm -hmm. we just want to thank everyone who's listening mm -hmm. and all our followers. We love in the Instagram love. Everyone yes. who's commenting. Thanks to everyone who came to the SLP pizza meet that I um, really did not advertise enough. But we're going to do it every single Thursday um, this summer. There's going to be an SLP pizza meet at Bravi Ragazzi, 570 Putnam Ave in Brooklyn. The pizza meet starts at 8 p.m. I might change it to 7.30 because I didn't feel like I had enough time to talk to everybody before the comedy show started. Mm. Also, people arrived late, so I didn't get yeah. to talk to them. So I thought, theoretically, 8 to 9 was long enough for the SLP part, but it was not. Yeah. I was rushed. You so. always got to do 7.30 and... Yeah, I had a really, minutes. I felt bad. I wanted to talk more and I didn't really. Aww. So, and then also because it wasn't just speech pathologists coming, it was also friends of mine and then it was also comedians and then extra comedians, like comedians who weren't on the show comedians because they were coming to hang out. Cool. So I'm sorry was, I missed that. And Frankie I'm sorry. Was there. Yeah, well, you can come another time. It's going to be I all will. summer. Every yes. Thursday. And I will be there. So every Thursday this summer, come to Bravi Bergazzi. Let's just say 730. I'm going to change it now. So the SLP pizza meet starts at 730. I'll be outside with Frankie eating pizza. Table for one, table for 20. I never know. I'm never going to care. That's I, great. So whatever. And then the comedy show will consistently begin at 9 p.m., which means 9.15 because comedy shows never start on time. Right. Um, and then we are going to have all of New York City's best comedians because that's all I know. Awesome. That sounds like a great time. Yeah, I'm really sorry I missed it. Well, there's lots of opportunities. I will. Yeah, I'll yeah. take them. Um, so we uh, we have our Instagram handle, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Follow us at SLP's Wine and Cheese Pod underscore between all those words. Yep. Yeah, and then you can email us at slpswineandcheese at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, anything you want to talk to us, say hi, come get a pizza. Yeah. Um, then also we're on Twitter. It's just slpswac. Mm -hmm. That's our handle there. And then you can find me on Instagram. I have an, a speech therapy Instagram. It's at Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S. C C C S L P and I post videos of myself doing speech therapy and including, you can find that theory. Including of theory of mind. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. Uh, and my Instagram, which I don't post that many videos as exciting but as that. You have lots of pictures and you utilize so I like Maria's Instagram Thank like you. say the handle of it. Okay. And I'll tell you what I like about Maria it. Maria underscore K O T S O N I S S L P. And I like Maria's um, you do? Instagram. You do? Yes. told me that before. Thank you. Do I not give you enough compliments? I could use, I could always use more. Well, I love your Instagram. <laughs> oh, it's very thanks. good. thanks. Um, whereas I, I, I like to do speech therapy a lot. And I also like to make materials. And I can understand how to some people who don't share that same motivation, my right. um, <laughs> Instagram could be a little intimidating to those people who like, aren't gonna produce materials in the way that I do right. and you utilize materials that they have access to like the traditional ones right and it's like um, like here's my yeah. super duper fun deck exactly you're using what's out there you're not like putting the pressure of everyone's making their own materials or you can only use things on teachers pay teachers right there's decks of cards you can integrate these materials into a craft that you can easily make in this class 
So, like, use Thank what you. has been created by other professionals, modify it to a way that, like, motivates you to do therapy that way, and then just add a craft. And that's crafts like, can just be paper and glue. Yeah, that's, like, my style in a nutshell. I know. So I'm happy I just, it's yeah. apparent on my Instagram, because... Mm-hmm. It is, it is all me. Like, these are my sessions that right. I'm, uh, whatever, doing. So, uh, Maria anywho. just grazed her leg against me. It is oh. so smooth. I've never had a smooth leg like that. Oh, that's so funny because I, like, my friends on my birthday I know, were saying I the saw same that. thing. Do you use yes. hair? Do, no, this is just my you natural. Just shave? I haven't shaved in, like, almost over a week. Well, you did get, she got belly arch today, and she said that the yes. hairdresser said that she has thin hair, so yes. she was going to make, like, um, thinner highlights. Yes. So maybe your body hair is just thin. It is. Which is not traditional in the Greek population. Very true, I know. Good for you. I'm very Thank hairy, you. of coarse hair. If the hair on my chin grew as fast <laughs> as the hair on my head, I would just be like <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel right now. I was thinking that. I'm, I'm like constantly, I have like three locations on my throat where I'm like, better do homework, you know, get up to date on what the hair situation is on my throat. Maybe have you should add that hair. on your to-do list when I'm gone in Greece. Yeah, like maybe get my thyroid checked because maybe I'm like actually a man or something. Oh, no. I don't know because <laughs> I just have whiskers. No. This is 30. Hashtag. No. Oh, God. No, oh you have thin hair. That just took a I turn. I just feel like I can shave my legs and I have a constant 5 o'clock shadow. Interesting. Constant. Like kids, they get sensory f- from my legs. They love to rub their hands on my leg. Oh, that's not good. And I'm like, good. I understand you're doing that because it's so spiky. <laughs> like, stop it. You're annoying. Wow. They'll, they'll just sit there because, like, to them, they're just like, huh. You know, yeah. do you ever wear tights at work and the kids like to like put their hands no. on your knee? Yeah, I, they are. I don't have that issue because I don't want them to touch my knees. And number two, uh, I have well, because very you're, thin hair. You're working, right. But you're yeah. working with a population that doesn't have as much of, uh, like, ability to take social cues. Yes. And I'm working with kids, like, that's just an endearing sign. Like, they're just, they trust me. They want to, a lot of times I'll be doing therapy and the kid's hand is, like, on my upper arm. Aww. That's like the whole time. They're yeah. just sitting there like this touching me. Right. Because humans like contact. No, that's true. That's yeah. true. So I'm trying to teach them appropriate social. Like we can't just touch right. our teacher's legs, you know. But that's because you work with a different population. Right. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Well, let's get to our questions, though. Do we have? Hopefully, we have time for them. We the got question, questions. What? Yeah. Answer. People the ask us questions. She. She likes Paul. Oh, hey, ask, she likes Paul. Yeah. She. Uh, Stacy. Stacy, I didn't yeah, know that was Stacey her first likes name. Stacy likes Paul. Sta- oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to hear that story. Yeah. On a side note, I'm not. Gonna I don't help. know who Paul is though. Is Paul is Paul your husband or is Paul like Aww, a don't pop we- star? Uh, well, we're I, gonna have to like maybe- talk to her another time. Yeah, I know. It. I'm gonna not ask there. you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so anyway, she has a question about how do you teach yes and no with shaking your head. So I actually had a student that I did this with and. It took us pretty much all year, but she met this goal and, you know, she's generalized the goal. And how did I do it? So first, you have to start with yes. What is super, super motivating for this student? So start with what's super motivating and just work on yes first. Not that that long so that they have it like 50 to 60 percent. So shaking the head yes and you might have to do Hand over hand, you know, yeah. using your hand. That's what like, I do. Use their not like nod, you know, um, you, using your hand, using everything, models, tactile cues, verbal, visual cues, and then slowly start to introduce no with what's absolutely not motivating for them. Mm-hmm. So I've in the past have seen uh, a student who like hated marshmallows randomly, just hated to even like look at them. Uh-huh. So even if it's like. This student hates bugs or something. Like, get a picture of a bug and be like, do you want this? And then sh- teach them to shake their hand. Oh, and my no. goodness, yeah. But I know it's scary. Like, ah, bugs. But you don't want to, like, scare. Obviously, we're not right. scaring them. So you have to find, like, the right threshold of, like, if they're afraid of bugs, like, can they look at a little, little picture of a bug? <laughs> You know, so that's where you start. You're not right, trying yeah. to hurt yeah, or yeah. traumatize Basically, anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like a phasing out the fear. 
I, in a way, bit. but yeah, yeah. So then you're gonna ask them, "Do you want this?" That's the f- that's how you teach yes and no. You mm-hmm. start with that one question: "Do you want this?" Do you want this? Because a lot of people are like, "Oh, is this a dog? Is this a cat?" Or mm-hmm. they're moving on to like wh questions when they don't even when the student has to have the question: "Do you want this?" Right. If they can't answer that question, whether it's verbally or non-verbally, mm-hmm. then. That's where you're starting. Like, right. that's your first first yeah. question. Mm-hmm. Do you want this? So you find something super motivating to teach right. them yes mm-hmm. and something that they definitely do not want to teach them no. Right. And then you slowly ease into, like, something they, they like more than the other, you know, and then you have to switch it up. But you have to start with, like, kind of the two extremes. Like, what do they definitely want? And what do they definitely And what they definitely want. do not want. Right. What do so you definitely want? Mice. I have a phobia of mice. mice. So that's why when I teach um, no, I'm Uh like, put myself in their position. Like, would I want someone... Use your theory of mind. Yeah. Would I I want someone showing me, like, a picture of a mouse? No. Can I handle, like, the emoji picture of the mouse? Yes. Right. So, like, put yourself... Yeah, put yourself... Oh, so it's like you're going to... So, like, Harry Potter has that example where um there's Voldemort? like no oh, there's okay. um shapeshifters and they turn into your number one fear so in order to to combat them you have to picture your fear doing something silly and Ooh. that's how you can get rid of them because they just feed off your fear so that's kind of what you're doing you're like i am make i'm making i'm trivializing my fear by making it an emoji as opposed to its real thing yes yes yeah. and then the thing is when you do teach them no mm-hmm. like Let's say you find what they really, really hate and you're not going to like just like, you know, like keep waving the picture in front of them. Like you're going to say, like, do you want this? And they're going to get a no or shaking their head. And then you just Mm -hmm. like throw the picture away, like take it out of there. Right. Yeah. Because the immediate reinforcement. Yes, exactly. And that's reinforcing. Right. I said no. I shook my head. No. Like so it's reinforcing. It's not negative reinforcement. People think when you just use no or something mean, it's negative reinforcement. Yeah. Positive reinforcement just means that you're increasing the likelihood that the behavior will reoccur. Exactly. So you're making it highly motivating to say no because as soon as he has said no, the stimulus, which is problematic, is now eliminated. Exactly. It's gone. Exactly. So as soon as I say no, it's gone. So now I'm going to be increasingly motivated to give you that behavior again. Exactly. Because I got my way and I understand the function of language. Exactly. And you don't have to sit there and make them say yes every time. Right. They said no. You got rid of it. That's it. That's it. Like they got it. Check. That's a check. They said no. They shook their head. They said no on the device. They hit a switch that said no. Check. And then after that, so it's funny. I'm so glad this episode happens after Mike's episode. So Uh Mike's mom works in a special ed school. And Mm -hmm. so they grew up not, so I guess she, that's probably how she ended up there. I've never asked the story. Yeah, But probably. obviously she has a son with autism, so it increased her interest. And she also, like, established techniques on how to get him to do things. And he also, like, so he has a lot of skills. He can wash right. the laundry and do... Oh, that's awesome. And so he's he's got a lot of skills. But her issue is that it's hard like so once you do all that and now he can answer yes no questions based on what you did you have to progress from there Mm -hmm. that's not it so like even though everyone needs visuals and everyone needs everything you eventually have to like fade them you have to fade them but not even just fading you have to increase the sophistication and the length and complexity of everything right so So with yes no no, it has to get once you did what maria's thing is Mm -hmm. And now I have, so I have the kid who can now do the thing that Maria taught them to do. Yay! So now I'm going to show them a picture. So I have a picture of my coloring book, and it's got worms and dirt and grass and baseballs and pencils and bees. I don't like any of those things you have in there. Well, I say, do you like to eat bees? Uh, Oh, so you're you're asking a higher, yeah, I gotcha. And then I'm like, tell me, no, I don't like to eat bees. So I'm teaching them no, step one, but then step two is that whole utterance with the negation. Like, I do not Mm -hmm. like bees. And they have to syntactically put that in the appropriate spot because they're reversing it after I said. So I said, do you like bees? I do not eat bees. Like, I do not like bees. Right. So they have to change the order of the words. Right. Too. So the first step, so after you do everything that Maria said, then 
present to them scenarios that they could negate because you can't end there we got to keep going if they got that then they can get more which i think is problematic in the population that you work with because these people become adults and that's kind of what their struggle is now it's like there's not as many things available to them Mm -hmm. and like it's hard to get things so that they could be functioning at 26 and 30 and 40. Right. So it's like the therapy is ongoing and the sophistication and complexity has to continuously increase. That's a very good point. So, yeah, so I'll have, like, a picture of something, and I'll be like, do you like to eat baseballs? And they're like, no, I don't right. like to eat baseballs. Yeah. And so it's like, I mean, I'm also expanding the utterance. So let's say it's a mixed group. Mm-hmm. I have one kid who I want to work on sentence structure, another kid who I want to increase the length and complexity of their utterances, and another person who I want to answer WH questions. And maybe another with, like, in the final position exactly for bees or right. like i don't like the l right right yeah so all of those activities target all these these goals every i feel like every speech activity targets every goal so when people ask me like well what goal are you targeting i'm like what goal am i not targeting i hear you which one i hear you like look at this and tell me what i'm not doing we are gonna have an episode on mixed groups though yes yeah i want to so, do that yeah. too but, but yeah, so right. theory of mind. Are we going back to theory? Let's of mind? go to theory of mind because this was your like so gung ho. Because Deborah is all about theory of mind, right? Yeah, because you I love theory of mind. You don't want to feel, or you don't want the perception of others, even though you don't care about their opinion of you, to be that you are just like a glorified English teacher. You no, that was yeah, such so a good I point. Don't, I don't care. Well, I don't, that doesn't impact me. Right. No, no, that's Because it's not my truth. Yeah, I agree. Like, so it's not like, if something bothers you, that means you feel violated, which Mm -hmm. means that, like, something has triggered one of your virtues. Right. You feel like something that you're not being virtuous in. Yeah, no, no, You're either excessively or deficient in it. Right. No, I I know you don't care if people Mm -hmm. say that, but. But maybe this will be helpful for other people to hear. Exactly. And that's why I wanted you to talk about theory of mind. Right. Yeah. Well, theory of mind is how, so when, once you don't have this population of um, individuals who have multiple handicaps or right. who are um, not, they're less expressive right. or they are cognitively at um, the lower end of the spectrum as opposed to their peers right? Um, or age-matched peers right. really would be more appropriate to say. So once you get past that population, there is... Everything is on a continuum, like a spectrum. Right, like a spectrum, There's, Even yeah. when you're, like, super smart, you could be in a classroom with somebody who's just, like, smart. And then you can be, and somebody else can be in that class who is not as great at reading and, re- ma- at reading and writing, but they're good at math and right. science, you know? Yeah. So there are varying strengths, and there are varying deficiencies, and they right. come to different extents. So I do see this in my population when the kids just struggle so much with reading comprehension. Mm-hmm. Because we're like, what do you think about that? A critical thinking question, an open-ended question. Yeah. They don't have the choice. They're just looking back in the text for the answer, and it's not there. Right. Because so Hemingway has this the iceberg effect is something that's like important in literature and it's um the use of diction and rhetorical devices meaning that like the language is hinting that that what the author says is almost as important as what the author chooses not to say oh wow so you have to be able to think about like if i said deborah ate the sandwich and I said Deborah devoured the sentence right. the sentence the, sa- the s- <laughs> sandwich yeah what it is? yeah so I chose eight that because word. I'm like it's normal right. and I said devoured because it means like I have impulse control right. so I'm revealing or, something about my character or you were really hungry or I was really hungry or there's something so uh, my diction my word choice so vocabulary has now, that's semantics right yeah there. right there has now 
provided an underlying meaning that is not concrete on the surface because what an author chooses not to say is more important than what an author does choose to say. That's very, very And that's important. hard for these kids to wrap their head around and that doesn't mean that they should be in a more confined setting just because it's hard for them to like find hidden messages and stories right <laughs> you know right. yeah <laughs> so it they need help too and they might also struggle with like word problems they'll be like so and so like so and so got on the train the train's going 60 miles per hour so and so's on the, the car in the car and that's going 65 miles per hour and who's gonna get there first who's gonna something. get there first and the people are like why are they driving this far like that <laughs> maybe they can't get past that they're just like this is not <laughs> Right. Or, like, yeah. where, where are they going? Right. No, but it's, like, not important. <laughs> right, so they're getting too focused on that yes. and not enough about, like, the actual information yeah. that was provided to them. Because it's hard for them to focus on the whole picture. They only focus on the individual details because usually that's where the answers are. So if I said to you, like, Mike is going to the store, he is going to buy milk, flour, and eggs, mm -hmm. then I would say, who's going to the store? I'd be like, Mike. Where is he going? To the store. What will he buy? something to make a cake but that's not what i asked <laughs> no, you no i know no. right i know I'm but sure. that's the inferencing part so right. that was so the concrete was the questions that i asked Mike, you fla um flour something i forgot milk eggs and flour milk eggs and so flour. so you struggled to recall all the details but you were able to infer from the story that he's gonna bake a cake yeah but i didn't say he's gonna bake a cake right so you had to use your theory of mind right because what do i need to yeah. make Right. So, but if somebody struggles with theory of mind, if they're like higher level autism and mm -hmm. they are able to do or they're excelling at things in the in the educational setting, I might be like, well, what's he going to make? They're like, I don't know. He's right. getting milk, eggs and bread. Right. Yeah. No, I have, like, I have what kids is the like problem? that. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like, why are you asking me? And yeah. is it time for Thomas They're like, yet? it doesn't even kidding. say it there. <laughs> Right. Like, how do you know? And I'm like, well, those are the ingredients. So maybe, and and they they might be like, well, it's Schrodinger's grocery list. Like, they are he's either making cake or not making cake until the cake is made. Right. If they want to <laughs> really. It could be pancakes. It could be they. True. So they might list everything on earth that could be made. Right. So with these ingredients, and they're like, how point. am I to know it's cake? Right. And that's. Where they have this breakdown where... Yeah, that's a waste of time and energy, and we need to bring that in. <laughs> like, we, we, we need, need to, to just answer the question right. and move on to the next one. So, th And that's executive functioning. Mm -hmm. the, 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 point, the point you go from reflecting to initiating is your, um, like, productivity. Right. Processing speed. From reflecting to acting. That's the process. And the planning, right? The planning. Most of it happens in the planning stage and the actual... Mm -hmm. Right, but if you're focused on all of these irrelevant details, mm -hmm. it's hard for you to navigate to the finish line. Right. So task completion is also going to be issues. These kids probably need time and a half on a test because right. not only are they overthinking everything, but then they're like they're worrying themselves. Like my girl who got me this wine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you. Were you. Me. Right. <laughs> is, this, is this all about me right now? No, I'm just kidding. Are, just do kidding. you think is most that things my are about you? <laughs> Um, a little bit. <laughs> no, just, I have been told that in the past. Really? No. Yeah. I'm always like, nothing's about me. I remember Mike and I were in Italy, and we're walking down the beach, and someone's like shouting at us, like shouting and waving wow. their hand. And Mike's like, is that someone getting our attention? I'm like, you think everything's about you? Well, that's because... We're in Italy. Like, who knows us here? It was his cousin who was like well, coming to pick us up. Like, he was completely right, but I'm like, you think... You hear a noise, they're like, Mike Racine, big fan. And I was being a snot. Wow. Because I'm like, you think everything's about you, but like, it was, it was completely right. They were waving at us. That was his cousin. They were coming to get us. Or you're both wrong. It wasn't a fan, and it was about him, so you're wrong. <laughs> right, yeah. He's wrong. Yes, his cousin. Possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, me and Mike have a lot in common, so, but that's funny. Yes, yeah, you yeah. do. Mike and Maria are very similar people. So funny. Anyway, it's our tips and trick time. Yeah, so my... So do you want to do or you want me to go yeah, first? Yeah, I can go first. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to uh, have fun because it's a Friday night. Mm -hmm. and this is our Friday night right now, which I love it. Um, my tip and trick 
trick is when you go bathing suit shopping, mm-hmm. look for adjustable straps. Mm-hmm. Adjustable straps are great and they make a difference. And that just goes to show you be adjustable. Yeah. Right? Be In your flexible. therapy sessions. Be yeah. flexible. You, you know, know, you are only as young as your spine is flexible. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm flexible. Good. So you're very young. Thank you. I like straps that tie the most. Uh Like big ribbony kind, not like spaghetti strap, dental flossy kind. Right. And I can't have anything go around my neck. I know. It hurts. But I like a nice thick strap, especially like around the um, rib cage that ties in the back. Interesting. And then like maybe something like uh, over the shoulder, more like a bra style. Uh huh. Yes. That goes, but doesn't crisscross. I can't do anything razor back, and I can't do anything halter. Wow. So you know what works for you. Yes. Be adjustable, but also know what works for you. Yeah, because you'll be like, who cares what you look like? You'll be at the beach. You'll be in a lot of pain, and you'll feel uncomfortable, and you won't have fun. So you need to just spend the time finding what feels the best on you, because then you'll look the best because you feel the best, and you're just exuding happiness and comfort and people will be envious of your like freeness yeah like was it fairy was it fair yeah i think that could still apply to how you conduct yourself in speech sessions too yeah you want to mirror you want to present with the behavior you want the people in front of you to mirror oh i like that yeah nice. i want you to be like me so i'm gonna do what i want you to do nice yeah but I also... So that's my tip and trick. That's a great tip. Be adjustable. Mm-hmm. Great. Be adjustable. Mine is to... Um, I already said to tell jokes the la- like two episodes you ago. But you could like spin off of that. Yeah. So the recognition of humor requires so many cognitive aspects such as recognition of incongruity in situations, identifications of similar sound sequencing comprehending that words have multiple meanings such as puns and homophones mm-hmm. um understanding compare and contra- contrast like the um excess and deficiency that's where humor is so appreciating the humor is a theory of mind skill so utilizing jokes and humor and sarcasm is going to target like the paralinguistic nonverbal aspects of speech, those underlining meanings, then that's a good segue. So if you're trying to teach um, this in the classroom setting, start small because obviously reading a story and reading an article is too long and too consuming, but a joke is only three lines. Pretty much yeah. you have to get to that punch. Right. So it's like to start smaller. So I would start with jokes and poems. And we're going to have a whole episode on using poetry and speech pathology. Yes. And it's my favorite thing to do. Yay. And uh, so my uh, tip is to work on jokes and poems in speech therapy. Mm-hmm. And you What's can What's your even... favorite joke? Tell us a Well, joke. I told you a joke last time, so I'm not going to tell that one. Well, but I do okay. love that joke. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell a more adult joke. Oh. But it's not like a dirty joke. Okay, good. Um, Two muffins are in the oven. Okay. And one muffin goes to the other muffin and says, holy shit, it's hot in here. And the other muffin says, holy shit, a talking muffin. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that funny? Because the muffin that's talking is saying like, holy, you know, that one's talking talking to me. But he's obviously talking too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's funny. And it's like, I Sorry. I'm no, like go ahead. Yeah. Interrupting no. you there. I uh, taught, I have, you know, um, a lot of children on the spectrum and I have some more expressive students and I did, and one of them, I don't know if he was trying to make a joke or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if this is a behavior. I don't know if this is for attention. I don't know what's going on, what he's saying right, right. now. So I'm like, are you trying to make a joke? And I stopped him and he was like, yeah. yeah. And I was like. Google, because, and I Googled knock knock jokes. So for uh-huh. me, I, I tried jokes. So and it was, I felt like you jokes. a little bit. Like. Oh, good. I'm going to tell five jokes, like five small jokes that you can use in therapy. So, um, why did the rapper carry an umbrella? Faux drizzle. <laughs> What's the faux? Four, like four drizzle. Faux drizzle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. So right that there. would be like a, a recognition of similar sound sequences yes. and multiple meanings in words. Right. Um, what's black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white? 
I don't want to say newspaper, but... Right, it's a penguin rolling down a hill. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've targeted imagery. Nice. And, like, the comprehension of, po- of like, a penguin. And now we can even do, like, Arctic animals or something if we wanted to. Love that. Um, why did the soccer ball quit the team? Because something with a goal, I'm assuming, but... He was tired of getting kicked around. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, like, that uh, idiom almost. Yes. Yeah. So, tired of being kicked around. So, like, we're ob- objects function, too. Right. So, you're kicking a ball. Yeah. And then also, it's, like, empathy. Like, understanding, like, things that we harm have feelings. Um, and whoa, then, that's like deep. That's like yeah, whoa. Man, I'm deep. You, you I'm are. I'm like a river. She is. <laughs> There's <laughs> motorcycle or. A car. And uh, why did the boy eat his homework? Because his teacher told him it was a piece of cake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. So, so I like that now one. That's, that's my the favorite. idiom. Because it's like a piece of cake. Now that's metaphors. Because I'm using an example that teacher was implying that the. The homework was very yeah. easy, but he was very concrete and literal, and he ate it. He consumed it. Yes. But he didn't think for himself, because would you look at this paper or homework and think it was a cake? Mm-mm. No. No. Right? Shake your head no. I like how you're, <laughs> yeah. I like how you're teaching idioms within the joke. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So. There's levels to this. Levels and to then this. how many there jokes are did I tell? To four. I told four jokes. Um, uh, the bowl, the penguin, the raptor one. Which I'm still what not What do you fully call an it. alligator in a vest? An allegation? An, no. an investigator. Oh, wow. And that you can work on articulation. So let's say I'm right. listening, I'm working on S in the medial position of words. Or clusters like alligator, mm-hmm. like L. Well, so L Crocodile. in the medial position and then S. So usually, oh, my favorite joke of all time, though. What do you call a fake noodle? An Food? impasta. Oh, okay. <laughs> An impasta. But I always say to kids, like, an impasta, and they say impasta, and I'm like, what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. You tell me impasta, and then they say impasta, and I'm like, now ask me what? And then you ask me now. Do I have to say, say, tell me the whole. What do you call a fake noodle? What? An impasta. (laughs) Good. And then I would check that you said impasta correctly with S in the medial position of pasta. And that you didn't, uh, your tongue didn't protrude past your teeth. Nice. But they did not produce that final R. Imposter. Well, that's <laughs> not the answer. I know. I know. I know. I'm just being silly. You need so, to be more cognitively flexible. <laughs> on that note, so maybe we should just end with a joke instead of a quote. Oh, okay. Deborah's um, on the spot joke. now. Another joke. Okay. Um, what didn't I say? Oh, man. If you want, I can just give you a quote. Uh, why was the dog a bad dancer? Because he had two left feet. I <laughs> get that. Does a dog have two left feet? Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> That's and a then what hard does it mean? One. What does it mean to have left feet? That you're a bad dancer. So it's, yeah. So idioms and figurative right. language. On that note, thanks for listening. Yes. <laughs> I hope you liked comedy and theory of mind with Deborah. I, I, <laughs> and was I bikinis here with Maria. <laughs> Bikini advice for with Maria. Okay, see ya. Adios. Ciao.